administer CPR to him, just try to bring him back. Couldn't, couldn't get him back. Two Acadiana men die in open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Their two friends by their side, but unable to help wondering if they'd be next as they cling for life during Tropical Storm Nate. In an exclusive interview with KATC's Melissa Hawks, the harrowing days and nights fighting for survival. The truth behind the Trinity 2 tragedy. Thursday night at 10 on KATC. I wait for Nick to call me every day like he did before, you know? See what's going on. Guys in, you get them in, get them to safe harbors. So this doesn't have to happen again. Imagine working offshore and being left at sea as a tropical storm crashes in. It's been almost two months since this happened to 10 offshore workers and four were from Louisiana. Two of those offshore workers, Jeremy Parfait of Homa and Ted Dries Jr. of New Iberia, watched their friends die as they were waiting to be rescued. The survivors talk exclusively with KTC's Melissa Hawks about the terrifying days they'll never forget. That's what makes me even more angry is that I couldn't get no backup. I couldn't get any help. I mean, none. Captain Jeremy Parfait says on September 8th, he made countless calls to the company his crew worked for, Geokinetics, saying they needed to evacuate, but no one came to the rescue. In fact, the one vessel, the Mermaid Vigilance, which Parfait says was supposed to be on standby, left them. Take us out of here. We don't want to stay here. He said, no, Cap, it's not safe. I'm not staying here. Parfait and his nine crew members were 11 miles off the coast in the Bay of Campeche, working on the Trinity 2, a lift boat like this one. On Thursday, the conditions got worse as the storm moved in, with winds reaching 95 miles per hour. We were flat in the water with 25-foot seas rolling right over the top. Engineer Ted Dayreese Jr. says the vessel's legs were breaking and the crew had no other choice but to go in the water. Parvey made his last calls for help. 12-man life raft and one after the other, we just deployed into the water in a, in a single fall line. The men first tried to evacuate into an inflatable covered lifeboat like this one, equipped with food, medicine and water, but the wind blew it away. So they were left with a 12-man raft without any supplies. Well, all we had was to hold on that raft, which Broke. That was it. I mean, that was it. You would be vomiting underwater. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was unbearable. Aaron Howling, a worker from Australia, lost his grip the first night. Screaming and hollering, help, help, help. And the, when we would go up, we could hear them. Then when the seas would come up, it would put a wall around and we couldn't hear them anymore. After two and a half hours of swimming, the men were too tired to keep going. We didn't want, we didn't want, Nobody to get negative. On Friday, the storm started to die down. Dayree says the waves were 15 to 20 feet high, but the elements were beginning to take a toll on some of the men, like 32-year-old Craig Myers. Oh, everything was hurting on him. He was freezing. He was cold. Uh, he was calling. He was saying that he wanted to go home. You know, he just didn't know where he was. As day two came to a close, the men were miles away from the Trinity, too, floating aimlessly in the Gulf. All were sunburned, dehydrated, and a few were starting to hallucinate. But Parfait and Dayree still believed they'd be rescued soon. Melissa Hawks reporting for KTC TV3. Dayree and Parfait, along with the father of Craig Myers, filed a lawsuit against the companies involved. Tomorrow night, the men describe the last two days of their nightmare at sea, talking about their rescue and where they go from here. Most of us seek shelter when a violent storm hits our coast, but imagine being stuck in the middle of the Gulf, tossed around by a tropical storm. Well, that is what happened to 10 offshore workers who had to abandon their vessel in the Bay of Campeche two months ago during tropical storm Nate. Four of those men were from Louisiana. Last night, KTC's Melissa Hawk sat down with two of them who told us stories about their first few days lost at sea. The story continues tonight as the men describe the tragic ending. This is something you only see here on TV3. After two days of battling strong winds and waves, the worst of the weather finally passed over the crew of the Trinity 2. By day three, it was clear skies and calm seas. Saturday, it was hot. Uh, we were all blistered up. Captain Jeremy Parfait had already lost one member, Aaron Howling. He drifted away during one of the first nights. His crew was now cut down to eight. All of the men were getting physically and mentally exhausted, especially 32-year-old Craig Myers. 
so I'm in the middle, Craig, I'm holding him. His eyes are still open and I was kind of confused a little bit. So I checked and there was no pulse and I yelled, man. I mean, I, I tried, I mean, this body just gave out. Ted Darius Jr., Nick Reed, and Craig were all from New Iberia and had been good friends for years. Parfait says watching their friend die took a toll on everyone. Nick and Ted got to him trying to administer CPR to him, just try to bring him back. They, they couldn't, couldn't get him back. Early Sunday morning, Ted spotted a platform in the distance. The four strongest men, Ted, Nick, Jeremy, and another worker, started swimming to it and left the other five men, including Craig, who was tied inside the raft, behind. As long as it took us to even get that close, it took seconds for the, the seas to change and blow us right back out. I was started drifting away. Nick also started drifting away. I mean, me and him were just completely just exhausted, physically, mentally, everything. Almost at the point of giving up, Ted saw a boat. He's like, go to it, man. I'm gonna tell him I'm right here. I can't move. And I didn't want to leave him, but it was, I felt I, I had to at least try. After swimming within 50 yards of it, the boat turned away and started leaving. I never even looked back at the boat. I focused on these little bitty fish, and I was just either playing or trying to catch one. I, don't, I think I wanted to eat one. And then all of a sudden, I looked up because I heard a noise and there was a plane on top of me. After being in the water more than 72 hours, he was finally rescued. About 40 miles away from the Trendy 2. The men who were in the raft had been found four hours earlier. Ted pointed the Coast Guard in the direction of Parfait and Reed. Between me going in and out of consciousness, uh, we separated. Reed's body was eventually recovered. In all, four men died. Parvey says he was hours away from death himself. His lungs and kidneys were both failing by the time he reached the hospital. Melissa Hawks reporting for KTC TV3. Darius and Parfait are under doctor's care at their homes now, slowly recovering. They are suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome, among other things. Tomorrow night, hear a different perspective from Craig Meyer's father. He talks about what it was like here on land, waiting and wondering if his son would survive. You know your child is in life-threatening trouble. You want to, of course, rush to their side and help. But what if there's nothing you can do but sit and wait? It's a situation four Louisiana families were in after learning their loved ones who were working offshore were forced to evacuate their vessel in the middle of Tropical Storm Nate. It happened almost two months ago. Two New Iberia men, Craig Myers and Nick Reed, died before they were rescued. KTC's Melissa Hawks exclusively talks to Craig Myers' father, who relives those moments waiting and wondering if his son would survive. Being a father, you always want to be there for your children. And when my son needed me the most, I couldn't help him. Steve Meyer says his son Craig had worked offshore long enough to know trouble was brewing in the Gulf the second week in September. Craig was posting on Facebook and emailing with his mother about the intense wind and rain. Supposedly they had tried to send a crew boat to him on Wednesday, but the weather was too bad by the time they decided to send one. Craig was working on a lift boat, the Trinity 2, owned by Geokinetics in the Bay of Campeche. He was able to make one last call home before he and his nine other crew members were forced to evacuate their damaged vessel. She said his voice was, she could tell he was scared, but he was trying to stay strong for her. Steve got word Thursday night the Trinity 2 had gone down. Didn't know if they were in a raft or not. Didn't know any details. Craig's family, along with Ted Darius Jr. and Nick Reed's family, all met at Trinity Lift Boat Services to be together as they tried to find out information. Steve says he first heard a tugboat captain saw the men get into a 25-foot raft equipped with food, water, and medicine. And that's what we kept holding on to, you know, hoping that that was true, because uh, if they were in the raft, they had a chance. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Winds were blowing naughty. 
We just, it was this big balloon that left us, or they couldn't hold it. Steve didn't find out the men were in a life raft like this one until a phone call from the Coast Guard on Saturday night. Our hearts kind of stopped when we heard that because we knew if that was true, there was a good chance Craig wouldn't make it. On Sunday at 1 in the afternoon, another phone call from the Coast Guard brought some relief. And that's when they told us that the, the first group had been found, but they didn't know any names or conditions except that one person had died. A few hours later, almost all of the men had been found. Steve knew three bodies were recovered and was just hoping it wasn't his son. At 8.30 Sunday night, Steve's phone rang. The news wasn't good. I gave the phone to my son-in-law once they told me. And so he finished talking to the Coast Guard while I went to my wife. Two of his son's good friends, Ted DeRees Jr. and Jeremy Parfait, survived. Craig died in Ted's arms. His eyes were still open, and I was kind of confused a little bit. So I checked, and there was no pulse, and I yelled, man. I, I mean, I, I tried. I mean, his body just, just gave out. It does help give you closure to know that they were trying to take care of him. They cared. He believes his son would still be alive today if geokinetics had acted faster and evacuated the men ahead of the storm. Melissa Hawks reporting for KTC TV3. Steve Myers, along with the two survivors, Ted Darius Jr. and Jeremy Parfait, have all filed a lawsuit against the three parties involved. KTC reached out to Nick Reed's father, but he hasn't returned our phone calls. His company is one of the parties being sued in connection with this case.